Hey everybody, welcome back. Mike from Spectre Comics. It is Halloween 2021 and we're going to talk about Tim Burton's classic Halloween movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Last week, I drew Victor from The Corpse Bride while we talked about that movie. If you're interested to check out that video, that'll be linked in the description below. Now, while we talk about The Nightmare Before Christmas, we're going to be drawing a classic scene from the movie that's going to be Jack and Sally standing on the spiral hill against a full moon. So in the first half of this video, we're going to talk about movie facts about The Nightmare Before Christmas. And in the second half of this video, I'm going to talk about the actual process I used to draw the picture that you see behind me. Now, before we get started talking about the movie, I want to point out that most of the facts that I talk about in this video can be found on the documentary that's on the DVD, which is a featurette of behind the scenes footage about how the movie was made. A lot of interesting facts there. It's an interesting watch. So if you have the DVD and you've never watched the documentary, I recommend you go ahead and do so. So first, let's talk cast. Chris Sarandon voices Jack Skellington. However, when Jack is singing in some of the musical numbers you see throughout the movie, that's actually Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman composes a lot of the music and scores for Tim Burton movies, and he does the same here. Catherine O'Hara voices Sally, and that's many years before she starred as Moira on Schitt's Creek. Glenn Shaddix voices the mayor. You may remember both Catherine O'Hara and Glenn Shaddix starring in another Tim Burton movie, Beetlejuice. William Hickey plays Dr. Finkelstein. You may remember him as Uncle Uncle Lewis from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, a classic. Some of the other notable actors are Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman himself playing Locke, one of the three trick-or-treaters, and Ken Page voices Oogie Boogie, who you might remember as Sebastian, the singing crab from Disney's The Little Mermaid. Now, when Tim Burton created the concept for The Nightmare Before Christmas, he was an employee at Disney as an animator, graphic designer, and a concept artist. He also was involved in a lot of the feature films that you saw in the 80s, such as The Black Cauldron and Tron. Now, he conceived of the characters and the basic storyline for the movie in the 80s and then brought it to us as a feature film in the early 90s. Now, Tim Burton was inspired by those classic holiday stop-motion animated specials like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and he set out to create his own special, his own classic movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, that people could watch and re-watch every Halloween. I know that it's on my list. Now, Danny Elfman started composing and writing songs for the movie before the script was even done. Basically, Tim Burton would go ahead and describe a section of the movie, what was happening in the scene, what the characters were doing. Danny Elfman would go ahead and compose and write the songs and the music, and then he would come back, get that approved, and then Tim Burton would basically describe the next section, what's happening in this next scene, and back and forth through this whole process. Now the soundtrack for the movie by this method was completed rather quickly and while the movie was being storyboarded, so they were able to go ahead and take the full soundtrack of the movie, all the songs, all the lyrics, all just the musical score, place that to the storyboard and basically create a pre viz movie so they were able to see how the movie flowed and what they wanted to change and modify before they even set foot on the stage to animate the movie. As you know, stop motion animation is a very complicated process and time consuming process. Now I mentioned in my Victor the Corpse Bride video that all of Tim Burton movies have a certain stylized quality to the set pieces and environments which actually become a character in the movie. You'll notice in the architecture of The Nightmare Before Christmas, in Halloween Town specifically, the architecture has a lot of extreme angles. There's a lot of dark tones and colors to give it that haunted feel to really make it feel like Halloween Town. Some of the environments have clay spread all over them so that they could score these lines in them and create the sketch feel, which was inspired by Tim Burton's original concept art. You'll notice this clearly on the Spiral Hill and in the Pumpkin Patch before the Hinterlands, one of the major set pieces of the movie where there's a couple of songs and a lot of travel. The movie begins there and ends there, and they really wanted to bring that quality to the set pieces of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, the movie was filmed at 24 frames per second, which means they had to stop, pose, and shoot each frame individually, and every 24 frames was one second of movie. Now, the movie has a runtime of 76 minutes, which means that there was a total of 109,440 shots, individually shot one at a time to create this movie at a full-length feature film, 76 minutes. Tim Burton described this as creating a feature film in slow motion, and you can understand how slow the process is to do this when you have to move set pieces, pose the characters, put it to set back together, shoot the film. Now in order to move and animate the characters, the sets were designed to break apart into pieces or there was trap doors built into the set so that no animator had to reach more than 24 inches to pose a character or move something on the set for each shot. Again, you can see how time consuming with this is, but this all had to be pre-planned on where the set pieces broke out so they could pull the piece away, animate the characters, put the model back together, and then film 
the shot. It all had to fit together nice so you couldn't see any breaks in the set pieces while filming. Now to get the sweeping and dramatic shots that you see in this movie, the camera and the robotic arm that carried the camera were able to be programmed by a computer to move one frame at a time while the animators were animating. The camera had the ability to swing, sweep, tilt, raise, lower, and all this could be combined to give a dramatic effect that you would see in any feature film with a camera person. For the animation of the puppets, each character had a custom-made metal armature skeleton created for them with ball joints and pivots to allow for a lot of versatile motion while posing the characters. A clay sculpture was created of each character. Once approved, the clay sculpture would get put into a mold. A mold would be created around it. And once that was completed, they would pull the mold apart, put the metal armature skeleton in it, inject the mold with a foam rubber, and then the foam rubber was baked. Once that was done, you had a basically one color, single color puppet that was ready to be posed, but that would be put onto the paint department where they'd add clothes and hair to the character. And once the model was complete, that would be ready for animation. Over 200 puppets were created for this feature film. Now for Jack's head and animating his head and his mouth movements and his eye movements, over 400 different sculpts of his head were created based on what he was saying, different mouth movements, different eye movements, and basically each scene he was in, they would pop a new head on and off depending on what he was saying in the scene, and that's how they animated Jack's head. Now up to 15 crews were filming simultaneously different scenes to get this movie completed. As we said at the beginning, stop motion animation is a very complex and slow moving process, so you had to have multiple crews working at the same time. This movie was a huge undertaking. Now let's talk about the Jack and Sally drawing I have going on in the background. Now last year for my October Month of Scares series, the first video I did for October was a Jack Skellington drawing, but I did that in my sketchbook by hand with pencil and ink. This year I'm recreating a classic scene of Jack and Sally standing on the spiral hill with the moon in the background. Now as I usually do, I've created a sketch layer to draw Jack, Sally, and the hill and get the poses generally laid out on the page. Before we move on to the final line layers, I'm going to draw Jack and Sally and the hill each on their separate final layer so that I can turn things on and off as needed in case I want to refine something and have a clear shot in case there's any overlap of characters. After the sketch is completed and I've kind of laid out the character, I'll reduce the opacity of the sketch layer and kind of use that as a backdrop to fill in the final character lines. Now the character lines are done sketchy just like my sketch layer is but as I add more detail I'll slowly refine the lines to get the final line work complete. You'll also notice that I'm adding line weights and fine lines and heavy lines based on what aspects of the characters that I want to feature. Uh, it's just my style of drawing to use line weights in certain areas to emphasize certain things on the drawing. Now last year when I drew both Jack and Sally I did a video for each during the month of October. Those will be linked in the description below if you want to check them out. But each of the characters I drew individually and it was basically a shot from the waist up. So in this picture not only are we seeing a classic scene but you'll see the full bodies of the characters head to toe standing on the spiral hill. Because I did multiple characters in a whole scene this drawing took me a little longer than some of my other drawings. It took me about four and a half to five hours to complete this drawing and that goes from sketch all the way through to the final paint of this image. Now because the spiral hill is the base of the drawing I wanted to draw that in a much heavier and thicker line weight but add some refined details and I'll get into that when we get into the coloring portion of the description of the process used to complete this drawing. Now let's talk about the actual digital painting of this picture. You'll notice in the movie there's a lot of drab colors, a lot of blacks, whites, cool grays, browns, a lot of very muted colors. It doesn't look very colorful, at least in Halloween Town. However, when you go to Christmas Town, it's a very colorful environment. But because we're drawing the spiral hill that's going to be in Halloween Town, we're going to see a lot more muted colors. Now, what I wanted to actually do in this drawing is to actually add a little more color than the movie shows for the characters. So you'll see that as I describe what we're doing. Now, Jack is relatively simple. He's wearing a black suit and all of his skin is bone white or his skeleton skin is bone white. So we're going to kind of keep that going, but we are going to add some detail to his suit. He's got a black pinstripe suit, and the pinstripes are going to add a lot of texture to his uh, outfit. Ja uh, Sally's going to be a little different. She's got a little more color to her. She's got a kind of a cool gray skin. She's got the red hair. She's got the patchwork brown dress. And I'm going to add some detail into Sally, such as purple dots and large circles, lines, 
and some purple swirls on the top of her dress to give it a little more detail. Again, muted colors, but a little pop of color there. If you actually look and analyze the drawing a little closer, you'll see the detail in the dress. Now, one of the important aspects of Sally's design is the stitching. She's got stitching all over around her necks, around her arms, in her dress, all across her body. The stitch work is part of the detail of Sally that gives her a little bit of texture and makes it the classic look of the Sally character. So as we talk about coloring in this picture, we're gonna talk about laying down the flat colors, each on a separate layer below the final line work. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in shadows and highlights. So the shadows and highlights combined with the fine line work and the detailing of the clothing for the characters will really add some layers to this drawing. Now again, reminding myself that the moon is the backdrop um, the characters are going to be backlit mostly. So you're going to see a lot of highlights kind of on the edges of their characters. But the shadows and highlights actually give some depth to the face and the arms and the body. Um, you'll notice behind Sally's hair there's shadow which is behind her hair and that wraps around her face and that gives again a lot of weight the shadows. Now I didn't go extreme with the shadows in this drawing. I, I gave them a little more subtle because I didn't want to hide a lot of the detail but I did want to emphasize where the light was hitting the bodies and where the shadows were showing up. Now the spiral hill I went ahead and painted in a dark gray, but then I added the score lines I described earlier in the video with the facts about the set pieces is that they would lay clay out and put these lines, score some lines in the clay to give it that sketchy look. So I did the same here by coloring a solid color, give it some shadows and highlights on the hill as well, but then adding the score lines in the light gray to give some texture to the landscape. Now the background I kept very simple is a midnight blue with a full moon pale yellow to set behind Jack and Sally to kind of emphasize them as a character. It's part of the composition of the drawing. There's no lines on the moon. I just used a circle marquee and then filled the in with yellow and then gave the yellow a little bit of opacity to kind of dim it down so it was a little more pale. And that is the final drawing. So we're looking at the final drawing here. You can find this drawing posted on my Instagram at Space Misadventures if you want to study it a little closer. That is it for this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below what your favorite scene from this classic Halloween movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, is. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie. Hope you enjoyed talking about the fun facts and hope you enjoyed the process of drawing this scene. Like the video, subscribe to my channel. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching and a happy Halloween.